Ladies and gents, Pepperbelly back again with some more squad. And in this video, I want to discuss something that has been debated and talked about heavily on the forums as per usual. And I want to kind of shed my opinion on the matter. And this is in regards to player created mods for squad. Because we all know that squad is going to have mod support. It's actually going to be a very important aspect of the overall games community. And with it comes problems about how to actually properly support and implement community mods. So naturally, a ton of people were spitballing ideas on how to do so, and of course the developers were kind of interested in listening to what the community had to say in this regard, because I don't know about you, but one of the things I hate the most about modded games, games that rely heavily on having mods, is how they're handled. Essentially, when you want to use a certain mod and go into the server browser trying to join a server with that mod, it's very difficult to find them, first of all. And second of all, mods have to be activated very specifically. If you have a variety of separate mods that need to be working together in order for you to join that server, it could be a pain in the ass just to get into a game utilizing certain mods. Again, looking at something like Arma 3 is a prime example of unwarranted complexity that is completely unnecessary because usually the way arma 3 handles this you can get some mods from steam workshop and then you have to get other mods from the actual like armaholic or other websites you have to download them and then you have to load them into the launcher or you use other programs like play with six or other mod launchers that it just makes the whole experience just such an unnecessarily complicated task like, why do I have to go to all these websites to acquire, like, simple mods? Like, obviously, going and downloading mods isn't the issue. It's about how you activate the mods and run them and find servers that utilize said mods. That's the issue. Not so much where you get them. It's about how you go about utilizing those mods. So, a lot of people came up with ideas about how to simplify the process. And most of which people say that, obviously, Steam Workshop is going to be the fundamental community hub for actually getting these mods into the hands of players. Whether it be maps or completely, you know, rehauling the game mechanics or whatever the case may be, Steam Workshop is essentially going to be where everybody hosts it, which I think is ideal because obviously you want to have everything congregated in one place. You don't want to separate it. You want to make it very simple just to go into the Steam Workshop, hit subscribe, and then it downloads the mod for you. Very simple, very easy. No one can complain about that. Where the complexity comes in, again, which is the actual problem, is how you find servers that utilize those mods. So if you're going into the server browser, mostly if you have a certain mod activated, so if you look at Arma 3, for example, you go into the game's browser and it'll tell you what mods those servers are using. You have to look at it, you'll have a huge list. And if you're not compatible, you will not be able to join any other server unless every specified mod you have activated is actually being used by the server. This is where it becomes a pain in the ass. Because nothing's more annoying than wanting to just join a regular server, but you can't because you have to back out, unactivate all the mods in the game's launcher, relaunch the game, and then go join a server again. It's a huge hassle that's completely unnecessary because lots of games in the past don't even do this. They make it incredibly simple. And one of the prime examples I can think of is joint operations, the way Nova Logic's games have done things. No, or like, you know, Delta Force Black Hawk Down and joint operations most specifically. Another way of doing it is what other games do, where if you join a server that has mods you do not have or has a map that you do not have, it's hosted on a repository server somewhere else where if you join it, it'll automatically send you all the files and you can download it to your local client. So you don't have to go out and fetch the mods. You want to join a certain server because it sounds interesting. You read the description. It's all like, oh, yeah, this seems like something I want to play. It has all these mods. You join it. Oh, you don't have the mods. Go find them. Okay, well, that's obviously a pain in the ass. Most people will probably just say, well, screw it. I'm not going to do that and go play in a regular server. But if you join that server and it tells you, click continue to download all the necessary mods, people would like that. People would like the ability just to sit there and go, okay, I want to download every single mod the server has right now while I wait to join the server. Lots of games have done this as well, mostly for maps, but some games will do it for mods as well. It just makes the whole situation, the whole thing, a lot simpler for the user. You want to make the user experience as streamlined as simple as possible. That's what I usually talk about on my channel a lot, is just how to simplify things. Over Overly complicated stuff, although PC gamers should be used to that kind of thing, you know, tweaking files and doing all kinds of stuff, the average gamer isn't. 
and the average person is. I have friends who would not want to be bothered performing even the simplest tasks of having to move one file to another folder. They just, they look at that and they're like, oh, I'm so flustered and compli- you know, it's too complicated. I don't want to deal with it. And it's, I sit there and hang my head, you know, like, are you kidding me? It's, it's super easy. But you got to realize that a lot of people actually are that way. They just don't want to be bothered with that shit, right? They just want to get into the game and play it. And what I'm proposing, like, as my method, is what follows what joint operations and, you know, most of Nova Logic's games have done in the past, which to me is the ideal way of doing it. Essentially how it works. If you have the base game, it's installed normally. Every mod that you end up installing afterwards installs in a separate folder in the installation folder acting as an expansion pack. Because Joint Operations has the base game, which is Joint Operations Typhoon Rising. Then it has an expansion pack called Joint Operations Escalation. You can activate these at will. It doesn't really matter because in the end, whatever server you join, it's going to automatically in real time select what you need for that server. So I'm going to go ahead and show you an example right now. So here we are in Joint Operations Escalation. This is the expansion pack. You can tell because the green main menu theme. Right? It changes color based on whatever the hell it is, expansion pack or mod you're using. So if I go to the options, you can see here I have at the far right a tab called expansions. If I click on it, you'll see that I have Joint Operations Typhoon Rising, which is the base game. I have Joint Operations International Conflict, which is a mod I downloaded for the express purposes of showcasing what I'm trying to demonstrate here. And then of course you got Joint Operations Escalation, which is in fact the expansion pack. Now you can swap between these in real time. So if I go to Joint Operations Typhoon Rising, I can just click OK and it loads up the original base game. And it actually changes the loadouts and the stuff you have available to you based on whatever the hell mod or expansion pack you have selected. So if I go to the International Conflict mod, I can swap to this in real time as well. And now you can see I'm here in the actual International Conflict mod, which is, again, very, very simple and streamlined. If I go to the player, you'll see that I have different skins. Things look different slightly. You got different equipment and weapons and whatnot showcasing that. This is, in fact, the mod. Now, the beautiful part about this is the fact that I can just go to a server like this. We'll go to the server browser. We will find a server. And if you can see here, it actually shows you the emblem based on whatever version the server actually uses. So for this server here, you can tell by the blue and red icon, this is the base game. This is default Joint Operations Typhoon Rising. If I go to this one here, this is actually the expansion pack escalation. And this, of course, right here is International Conflict. Now, if I want to join this server, but I have International Conflict selected as my activated expansion and mod, what's going to happen if I join this server? Is it going to tell me that I can't? Is it going to say I need to back out and reactivate the mods associated with it? Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. It just instinctively, in real time, shows and activated whichever version I needed for that server, which is Joint Operations Typhoon Rising. This is the base game. It just picked it for me in real time. And now here I am in game without having to back out to go to a launcher to reselect or deselect whatever mod I have activated. It just automatically picks and choose whichever version it is I am in need of. They're all installed. No matter which mod I have activated, it'll automatically, as I said, choose what you need. It's just so much easier. If I even go back, you'll see I'm going to quit. It'll go back to International Conflict. Now we're back in the International Conflict main menu, showing that this is in fact the activated version I'm using right now. And if I want to join, let's say Escalation, well, let's do that. Again, it's going to just switch the menu in real time, just like that, and put me back in the game. Now it's loading the map. It's that easy. To me, this is a critical thing for the end user to be able to just have this level of simplicity. because. Every single mod you install, every single one you have installed and activated, whichever one is activated in real time, the game will automatically, depending on the server you join, pick and choose what you need to be able to join and play on that server. So now here I am in Escalation. Even though I had International Conflict loaded up as my main menu, indicating that was the activated version, I joined a server that it doesn't support, 
So it switches back to whatever version is actually needed for it. Just that easily. And now here I am, an escalation. Like, to me, that is something that is absolutely mandatory for something, a game like Squad. Because Squad's going to have a ton of mods. I know people are going to go crazy, whether it be maps or standard, regular game-altering mechanics that a mod's going to use to completely rehaul the experience for the gamer. Whatever it is, like, having it simplified like this, so you can just download and install every single mod you possibly want, and they're all, every single one of them, activated by default. And then you can just join any server you want, and whatever server uses certain mods, it'll just activate those mods in real time. If not, it'll just disable the mods you're not using, just like Joint Operations did. If a game from 2000 fucking 5 can do this, why can't we achieve some level of it now? And every time I look at Arma 3, it just, it enrages me because I think about just like, I want to go online and play a simple game, but every single server, the way it's filtered, the way everything works, it's super complicated and completely unnecessary and you do not need it. You don't need it. It's just, it's such a pain in the ass for the user to have to worry about getting all these mods from different sources when it can just be like, you can just download all the mods, have them all activated when you launch the game, and then when you join a server, it'll just disable the mods you don't need. And it'll only activate what the server utilizes. To me, that's like, it's critical. I don't see why that's not in most games nowadays. And a game, like I said, like Squad, it could be very beneficial for the end user experience. Now, I think at the same time, hosting maps. So having custom maps that people can download, should because they work independently, from game altering mods, right? They should be working within the base game itself and every mod you can throw at it. It's, it's a universal asset. It should work with everything, right? And of course, obviously some mods are theme based. So like personally for me, I would love to see like an Arctic or Winter Warfare style theme to the game where basically there's a bunch of maps and the assets are created to obviously supplement that, that theme to, to give it that Arctic Winter Warfare vibe where all the assets are actually going to be camoed in winter gear and all the soldiers are wearing proper winter gear and you have like snowmobiles or whatever you know whatever the hell it is you may throw at the game that's a game overhaul mod that's like a completely different theme that has maps that are kind of tied into that experience you need those maps as well but at the same time players can also just make maps right they can just make all kinds of maps and that's what's going to happen people are going to be able to customize whatever maps they want so i think having that repository server system where basically if you join a server that has a map you do not have, it'll just automatically download the map to your system. In real time, simply like most games out there do, lots of games do it. So I don't see why we can't do it here in Squad. It'll just help alleviate the complexity that players don't want. You just want to join a server and you want to have the game handle everything for you. All right, like it's, it's kind of not, it's not being babied. You know, some people are thinking like, oh, we got to baby the players, just make it super casual and simple. But there's a different, there's a fine line between simplicity and babying the player. And simplicity just makes the game more accessible. And even, you know, veteran gamers and PC enthusiasts like simplicity. You know, I've been modding games for a long time. Well, I don't, I don't mod them. I mean, like, I like to download mods for my games. And sometimes when they get too complex, you know, you gotta, you know, overwrite files of the base game or do things like that. I absolutely don't want to be bothered with that because I don't want to overwrite files in the base game. I'd rather just have a separate folder where the mod is installed and a shortcut accesses it. And then it kind of just plays off of like that, utilizing the original game assets, the original game files, which to me is like the best way of doing things. So Joint Operations, as I demonstrated, is a perfect example of that because every single mod you install is an expansion pack. It acts like an expansion pack that can be swapped at will based on whatever server it is you join. So you join a certain server, it'll just swap to the expansion pack you need. You join another server, it'll swap to the expansion pack you need. And in a game like Squad, I could see people rehauling the game in very significant ways. Having it act like an expansion pack would make it a lot easier for the gamer just to be able to choose the servers they want, go on Steam Workshop, download infinite amount of mods, everything you could possibly want, have them all activated all at once, and then whenever you join a server, it'll just pick whatever mods are needed. And if you don't have the mods, it'll either download them or it'll direct you to where you can download them. And if you have a map, that, or if you join a server that has a map that you don't have, it'll just download that map. Unless it's part of a mod. If it's part of a mod, then obviously you got to download the whole package. But that's the point I'm trying to make. It's just simplify it. Make it super easy for the consumer just to get in there and play your damn game, right? That's what we all are here to do. We don't want to fiddle around with profiles and files and moving around and doing all this ridiculous shit in folders. We just want to play the game. 
and especially in an environment like Steam, most people do not like to be bothered with messing with files. A lot of people don't. Especially how a lot of the time when you look at mods for games that come in CDs or physical boxes and then the Steam version, there's usually different ways you've got to accomplish implementing certain mods. Because you go and look at the instructions for most mods, it'll be like, this one is the regular box version, this one's the Steam version, and they have completely different install instructions. So, just making it simple for players just to be able to just do that. Subscribe to a file they want, subscribe to a mod they want within the Steam Workshop or wherever you got to download the file, doesn't really matter. Steam Workshop would obviously be ideal because you want to have that community hub be the focal point of where everybody gets community-made assets. And being able just to subscribe to whatever you want, it downloads it, puts it into an expansion folder in, within the game, the base game file, without overwriting anything. So that way, whenever you uninstall it, it just erases that expansion folder, makes it very simple to keep everything neat and tidy and clean. And it's just, it's a profoundly better way to me to do things, you know? Like, I don't know if I'm the only one who actually feels this way, because I know some people are obviously going to come at me and be like, yo, I play Armor 3, I download mods, I have zero issues. And it's like, that's not the point I'm trying to make. The, the, the point I'm trying to make is you want to make the whole process simplified. And Arma is undoubtedly, I don't care how much of a fanboy you are, I mean, I love Arma, but it's, it's, you can't deny the fact that that game is a complete clusterfuck and a mess when it comes to dealing with mods. Alright, like, it's, it's one of the most frustrating experiences ever. I'm stressed out trying to get the mods I need just to be able to play certain game modes or certain community-made maps. Or certain community-made missions, you know, you got custom missions you want to play, oh, you need this mod and this mod, okay, well, I gotta go find where they are and download them, and then, not only that, joining servers is a nightmare, you gotta filter out which ones you actually need, and then you got, like, TeamSpeak additional, like, auxiliary mods that aren't even part of the fucking base game, they're, like, they belong to, like, TeamSpeak and shit like that, like, Task Force Radio, and you, you have all this crazy shit that just makes the whole thing just a burden on the player, and you do not want that, especially in a game like Squad, which is basically trying to simplify the entire ARM experience into a game that's just very accessible and very easy to get into, while offering the same level of immersion and atmosphere that ARMA achieves, and sometimes it actually bests it. So, in my mind, achieving something as simple as that. I don't know how the devs are going to go about doing this, I have no idea what their mindset is, I know that they're mostly focusing on the idea of community-made maps, but, obviously, some people are going to make mods, you know, I would love to see, I, I know someone's probably going to come out with, like, an insurgency type of mod where they add free aim to the weapons. You know, they, they might come up with that. There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff. People are going to come up with all kinds of things for the game whenever it actually releases, and if there's going to be a tremendous amount of mods, it's just easier to be able to download everything you want, and when you join a server, it just picks and chooses. You don't have to go deactivate or reactivate mods, because, as I've said multiple times in this video, that is the bane of dealing with actual user-created content. I fucking hate having the back out of a game, disable mods, and then restart it, and then find the server I originally intended to join, and then be able to join it. And if I want to join another server, I don't have the mods, I have to go restart the game, I have to quit out, go to the launcher, pick and choose, select the mods I need, and then... Why? It's such an unnecessary hassle, as I've been saying this through this whole fucking video. It's just, it's a pain in the ass. Being able to just have all the mods installed, and this fucking server and the game will deal with everything you need when you join it, that's the better way of doing things. In my mind, that is the ideal user experience. Just making it simple and easy for everybody involved to get what they need and just get to, in to do what they initially want to do, which is just play the game. I want to play the game. I download all these mods. They're there. And then I join a server and it just, it picks the mods I need and it just plays it. Just, just that fucking easy, right? That's the, I've been saying it a lot through this video. I've been repeating myself a lot. That's exactly what we need. In a game like this. That is exactly what we need. Just simplicity. Simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. Repeat that shit over and over again. Because nobody wants to deal with the convoluted fucking annoyance of having to go back and forth by turning off the game, exiting, reopening, exiting, reopening. Just to be able to join one fucking server. And if they change their mind, they have to quit again. Reopen the game, quit again, reopen again. Until they find and are able to actually join the server they want. In addition to having to filter through all this bullshit. Just to find the server that actually utilizes the mods they require. Simplifying it. Again, will alleviate stress for everybody. So, that pretty much wraps up the video, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm interested in hearing what you have to say on the subject. If you have some suggestions or any other ideas, lay them out. I am interested in hearing it all because this has been debated to hell and back. And honestly, some ideas are pretty much what I've been saying. A lot of the ideas have been 
kind of go with what I've been saying. I've been relaying my opinion with some examples to show that it is possible. It can be achieved. It's not impossible. You can simplify the experience. Games from like a decade, over a decade ago have done it. It could be achieved now. So there's not really any excuse, but anyway, <laughs> whatever. Video's done. My name's been Pepperbelly. Thank you guys for joining me today on this video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.